Hey friend, in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to paint a color wheel. So if you don't know what a color wheel is, it's a wheel with a bunch of colors and I'm going to be showing you, <laughs> I'm going to be showing you how to paint one, a tertiary color wheel that has 12 little pie slices of colors. And throughout this tutorial, I'm going to give you, be giving you tidbits of information on color theory. Uh, how to harmonize your colors, what causes strain in your pieces, whether it's floral, landscape, etc. So it's going to be some color theory, theory knowledge mixed with how to paint a really beautiful color wheel with 12 different colors and three values of each of those colors. We're going to talk about hue versus value and all of that stuff. Also, before we get into the tutorial, I have a PDF download of how to map out your color wheel um, as like a little guide for you. So if you're struggling with the math and how to get a precise pie chart with your 12 pie slices, I've got a download for you that will make it a lot easier. So make sure you download that below and stick till the end because I let you in on a little secret of what my favorite color is in this color wheel and I want to know what yours is as well. So let's dive in. So in this tutorial, we're going to be going over how to paint a color wheel. I'm going to throw in some tidbits about color theory as well in this tutorial, but if you want more in-depth color theory knowledge, my book, Everyday Watercolor, I have a full section in the introduction on color theory. Just as a heads up slash, there's just so much research and contradicting opinions out there about color theory. This is how I was trained. This is how I like this is how I like to reference my color relationships when I'm painting. I've just always broken down color theory and color relationships using a color wheel reference. This is not groundbreaking knowledge, this is common knowledge, but using a color wheel as reference as to what is going to evoke harmony versus contrast versus you know, just something that's going to make a piece more vibrant or muted. So we're going to talk about that kind of stuff in this tutorial, but I'm going to show you some fun tricks on how to paint a color wheel. We're going to paint something that's a little bit more in depth, uh, like this one down here. But if you look at the color wheel, we're going to start with just our basic primary color wheel. So that is, we have our three colors in this method of color theory. We have our three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. These three colors, traditionally speaking, you cannot mix with any other like natural, uh, natural occurring pigments. You can't combine or use any other colors to make blue, red, or yellow. But then if you use equal parts mixture of any two primary colors, so red and yellow in equal parts, for example, makes orange. So then we move to our secondary color wheel where we have six colors. So orange, green, and purple. Those are our secondary colors because they are equal parts mixtures of two primary colors. So blue and yellow makes green, yellow and red makes orange, blue and red makes purple. And then after that, we have our tertiary colors. So tertiary colors, I like to reference as the ones with the hyphens in the name. So you've got red, orange, yellow, green, uh, blue, violet, red, violet, blue, green. Those ones are called tertiary colors because these are the colors that have a slightly more in the mixture, maybe red, orange, uh, let's take that for example, has a slightly more red in it than yellow. Um, so you, when you're mixing colors for a painting, let's say, and this is going to be really color theory is just going to be really, really informative for you if you're not comfortable with color mixing. Um, but it's not just, oh, that is orange. So I'm going to grab orange in my palette and paint that because there's so many different temperatures. There's so many different types of hues within just one color. So the hue is going to slightly vary depending on the amount of pigment or the amount of red you have versus yellow, the amount of green you have versus blue, whatever. So those are your tertiary colors. And then after that, that ter tertiary color just goes on and on and on forever and ever because there's so many different uh, hues of one color. So that's a very basic overview of the color colors that you have in a color wheel. We're going to uh, basically paint this one, but with three value scales. So the term hue is just the color, the actual color. So if I'm saying it's more of a red hue orange or uh, the hue is more yellow, um, then I'm talking about the color. If I'm talking about value 
and I explained this more in my book as well, but the value of a color is the lightness and darkness of a color. So we have a darker value of opera rose up here or scarlet lake up here and a lighter value of opera rose or scarlet lake the more water we add to our mixture so the lighter it is or the more transparent the color is with watercolor the lighter the value is the darker the value that means the mixture of pigment and water ratio is more pigment to water ratio because it's thicker it's more opaque it's going to be darker using watercolor and we have we have an entire video on my channel on value scales if you need to grasp all of that and making a color chart, chart like this it's really fun actually you should try it all right, so starting off, let's just put this book off to the side or you can pull up a color wheel reference photo. There's millions on the internet, obviously. So I've got this paper towel holder because I don't have a compass and we are going to trace the outline of our paper towel holder. Or you can use something you have on hand at the house for my second circle, I have this collagen powder, <laughs> collagen powder um, tub that's round and we're gonna trace it. Try and line it up in the center as much as you can. Obviously you can get more accurate with a compass and you don't have to search your kitchen for all of your circular items. Um, and then my final circle is going to be the outline of this cup of water that I have. So we're just wee. Okay. Brace any of the lines you don't need. So we have 12 colors that we're going to be splicing out in little pies, pie slices, cake slices, whatever, using a ruler. Okay, so math is hard and I struggled through this myself as well, but I created a downloadable uh, color wheel map for you guys. That's a tertiary color wheel with 12 slices or 12 colors, sections, whatever, uh, that you guys can reference and download and follow because the math is hard. We're not in geometry class anymore, so suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what, and then I also will have noted where the primary colors are gonna go. In any color wheel, our primary colors are always forming a triad or a triangle in terms of distance away from each other. So you can't see my sketch obviously because I sketch super duper light so that the pencil doesn't show through my watercolor. But I've got my yellow is gonna go here, blue and red to make my triad and then the next color, the colors right next to my primary colors are going to be the tertiary colors, okay? Because that is just the subtle shift towards the secondary color and then another tertiary and then a primary. So I'm gonna start with my primary colors and we've got the three circles that we mapped out. So three circles are gonna be the same hue, but lighter values as we get closer to the midpoint of the circle. So I'm gonna start with Lemon Yellow Deep, obviously my colors, I'm type B, we've got some cleaning up to do, so I'm just gonna wet it and clean it up a little bit to get to the underneath color, which is Lemon Yellow Deep. And I'm just going to come up here and paint in my first yellow section, which is my darkest yellow value. You can be really precise about it with your crisp lines following your sketch as closely as possible, or you can be more loose. I'm gonna be a little more precise to make it look really cool. Color wheels are really fun to look at and reference as you're painting any sort of, any sort of subject. So you might want to hang this on your wall, prop this up in your office as a little reference. So I'm making sure this is my darkest yellow swatch or section. 
So it's mostly yellow pigment with a little bit of water. And then next, for my next section of yellow, you can wait for that to dry if you don't want any bleeding to happen, but I don't mind it. So we're just going to go to my water cup and just flick back and forth in the water a couple of times to release some of that yellow. And we have a lighter yellow for our mid value. It's a little too light, so I'm just gonna grab a little bit more yellow. So color is really, really expansive. The relationship of two colors or multiple colors together in a full piece can totally shift or change depending on the values you use, the tertiary forms or versions of a color that you use, whether you use a warm blue or a cool blue, like for example, cobalt blue in my palette is more of a warm blue compared to Prussian blue with those undertones. But traditionally speaking, our warm colors, think of them like fire. So we've got our reds, oranges, and yellows, and our cool colors are more like water, blues, blue greens, yellow greens. But obviously with every color, there's a slight bias or undertone of being warm or cool. Like for example, what I already mentioned with my cobalt blue versus Prussian blue. I would still theoretically use any of those blues, cobalt or Prussian blue as a cool color in contrast to a warm color, but it does, cobalt blue does have that warm undertone. So there's my yellow. I'm gonna come over here for my red and do the same thing. I'm using Scarlet Lake for my red. This pigment by Winsor & Newton is slightly orange in undertone. So if you want like a more traditional red, you can use, um, there's a bunch of other brands or even colors from Winsor & Newton that will give you that. But I love this color, especially with my florals. So thicker mixture of pigment to water to make it darker, this darkest value. I'm using my size six round brush. You can use a flat brush if you want to, to get more crispy edges or a thinner brush if you want. Up to you and what you feel comfortable with. Flicking a little bit and then making sure I get rid of that excess water on my brush by dabbing on my paper towel. All right, and now blue. I'm using Prussian blue for my blue primary color. Prussian blue is my all time fave color, I think in my palette because it's like a, it can be a really deep indigo blue when you use it in its full strength or darkest value. So with a lot of pigment on your brush and just a little water. But the more transparent or light the color becomes, the value becomes. It's like these really cool icy blues. And like I mentioned earlier, it's more of a cool blue than some of the other ones in my palette. So it's good to use as your primary color. Don't worry too much about the side edges of your pigment going over into the next section, the next color, because they are gonna have that color in it. So when you overlap, it's gonna be 
just fine. It's gonna all work out. So then our lightning. And a lighter last value of Prussian Bloom. You can really see the depth that you can get with one individual color with just adding more water to your mixture and making it more transparent. By doing a value scale, this is a three part value scale. We have, like I mentioned, that tutorial on value scales that'll show you how to do a full color chart, which is super fun. Highly recommend. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint my tertiary colors by, this is very type B of me, so if this stresses you out, you can actually pull the mixture in your mixing well and do this, but I am going to start with yellow orange, which is gonna be right here. So we're slightly working our way, working our way toward red. But I'm just gonna have yellow on my brush and I'm going to grab a touch of red. If that stresses you out, then come to a clean mixing well area and do that over there. But I like to just happy accidents. Go with the flow and go straight on my color. I can add water and pull it out into one of my mixing wells to clean off that dish of pigment. But again, if you don't like that style, just bring it into your mixing well. If you don't even like watching me do it, then whoops. So I basically am mixing it on the paper. And I only need to do that basically one time and then I'm just lightening this color for the other two sections of my, oh, this is yellow orange, not red orange, huh? We want it to be yellow orange, not red orange. I was doing it backwards. You want a slight shift in hue, not so dramatic. So I'm going over it with yellow again, very type B, so. There's people freaking out I know. watching this now. I know. <laughs> it's hard to talk and do this at the same time. I'm like following a specific thing, map, and I'm talking or trying to, and oops, and paint. It's very complicated. I'm sure people will forgive you. I hope so. Some won't. <laughs> Some won't. Some really <laughs> won't. I don't know why, what's wrong? Some with well, some people, but they just wake up on the wrong side of the bed and they're like, I can't handle how you painted that. <laughs> the, there will be no forgiveness for, from some people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I hope they will forgive me one day because it sucks to be angry for no reason. <laughs> we all make mistakes. But while it's still wet, I'm just adding yellow to it because that was Definitely supposed to be over here <laughs> with how much red there was. So same thing as the primary colors, I lightened it a little bit too much <laughs> in my water. And we are painting our yellow orange second value mid-tone. So one thing I wanna bring up now that I'm onto a tertiary color is the relationship between colors sitting next to each other on a color wheel. So this would be called an analogous color, color palette or color combination. When you combine two to three or more um, colors that sit right next to each other on a color wheel, so yellow, yellow, orange, orange, for example, or yellow, green, yellow, yellow, orange, whatever. Um, those would be con that would be considered an analogous color palette. And I love using an analogous color palette in all of my paintings in some way, shape or form. The reason for this is it's the most subtle transition between colors. So for your eyes or your viewers eyes, it's just the most calming or peaceful or easy way to go from color to color across your wheel. So if you're trying to go from dominant warm color. So maybe you have a lot of bright reds and oranges on your piece and you want to start to transition to a cool color very peacefully or um, in a really subtle way, then you're going to use an analogous color palette to get over to the other side of the color wheel where your cool colors are. 
This will also be mapped out a little bit more easy for you once all these colors are filled in, but that is an analogous color palette. My red is separating from my yellow a little bit, so that little mistake I made, not so bad because I am going to use a dry brush to soak up that red. So now it's a nice yellow orange color. Okay, so now we're doing equal parts of yellow and orange. Yes, I'm bringing yellow into a dirty mixing well. No, this is not an incredibly accurate depiction of equal parts. You can do that if you want. We're going with the flow, man. Type B over here. So mixing colors, color mixing, it's not an exact science because we're not sitting there with, you know, literally measuring the amount of color we're mixing with another perfectly measured amount of another color to get a perfect secondary hue or orange. So don't be so, I guess the word is anal. <laughs> <laughs> so don't be so anal about it. The main thing you wanna go for here is a subtle transition for your eyes between each section or pie slice. So if it's looking a little too red or a little too yellow, just go over it while it's still wet with whatever color you need. This is a lesson in color theory and the, how to paint a color wheel, but it's also a great way to help you train your eyes in seeing that tr subtle transition between, between colors and just how one little extra dab of yellow or one little extra dab of Scarlet Lake or whatever can make all the difference. Also, my paper got kind of chewed up over here because I was erasing so much, so that's that texture. Lighten it, dab it. Same thing with our values. If it's looking like you have this crazy contrast between two neighboring sections, one's super dark and then it gets super duper light, just go back over it with a little bit more of the pigment. It's not gonna be completely accurate the first time you lay your brush down on a new section. So we're just kind of going with the flow. And now for red orange. So I've got my orange mixture over here that I used for my last pie slice. I'm just going to add a bit more red to it. So if you are using a separate mixing well, you're just gradually adding more red to your mixture if you're going from yellow to red. As you move from pie slice to pie slice. Needs a little more red. Make sure, Make sure you stick to the end of this video because we're gonna have a lot of crazy cool colors on here and I'm gonna talk some more about color combinations at the end once we have all of our colors here. And I'm gonna share my favorite color in all, what's 12 times three? 36? 27. 12 times three. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking nine. Math fam. Not a math. I used to, that's the thing though, is math you used to be my best subject. Like I was decent at math when I was in school and regularly practicing it. Not anymore, I'm out of practice. Who is ever good? Dude, I was all the way up to AP calculus, man. Sam. Last red orange slice. And now we're moving on to red violet. So our mixture of 
for violet is going to be red and blue, not ultramarine violet in red and then ultramarine violet in blue, because then we're going to have a different undertone of blue violet versus blue for our, um, our mixtures. So we're doing it the color mixing way. So I'm going to have red over here and I'm just going to just touch it again stresses you out, bring it into a clean mixing well, like so. That's like the only clean area on my palette. So this is also going to be fun for you if you use different primary colors. Like for example, if your blue is maybe, um, what's another blue that I can't, um, cobalt. Yeah. Cobalt, but another like commonly used, like more cool blue that I don't use ultramarine. So, oh, can't think of names right now, but it's going to be slightly different. And yeah, cobalt's a good example. So if I were to use cobalt here or something slightly different hue than Prussian blue, then this range of colors would look different than mine than this example. So it's a nice way to educate yourself on, oh, that's a different outcome than I thought. You know, mixing Scarlet Lake and Prussian Blue, just a touch of Prussian Blue, gives me more of like this like brownish red than I was expecting. Fun fact. Let's hear it. When you mix the three primary colors together, you get black, depending on which you're using. If you're using cobalt blue, then you're going to get something funky, but fun. It could also be gray, depending on what colors, actual pigments you're using. Because not all reds, blues, and yellows can be treated the same. So look at that subtle transition of color on your warm side of your color wheel. So if you were to split your color wheel right here, you've got your fire colors, your warm colors. Obviously we have some colors that are technically warm, but they have a cool bias depending on what pigment you're using and vice versa. But overall, you got your warm colors over here. So I've got my red and slightly blue with a touch of blue, uh, Prussian blue mixture over here. I'm going to add more Prussian blue to it for violet. If I were to use opera rose and blue together, we'd get this really bright, vibrant purple that I love. But with Prussian blue and Scarlet Lake, we get more of like kind of a muted smoky purple, which is really pretty, but it's a very different purple than if you were to use Opera Rose or a different red. So painting a color wheel like this is really helpful too, especially if you're on a tighter budget, because all of these colors are coming just from three colors in my palette. Scarlet Lake, Prussian Blue, and Lemon Yellow Deep. And we're not only getting 12 hues, we're getting three values of those 12 hues. So you really don't need to go that crazy and buy all these pigments, you know, break the bank. You can be pretty budget friendly and stick to just three colors and just see the world that you open up with those three colors. By re being really intentional and adding just gradual bits of paint here and there or being more dramatic and expressive by changing the hue drastically, mixing two colors together that you think will look like poop and you never know, you might be surprised what it ends up looking like. We have this tutorial, a floral tutorial, where I use only three colors and there were some colors in there that were definitely surprising. We'll link to that 
tutorial so you can check it out. So now I'm going back to that same purple mixture and adding more blue for our blue violet. I overdid it on the blue, so we're just gonna dab in the Scarlet Lake. Again, this is not pouring formulas and measuring amounts of pigment to get it exact. We're going off, we're training our eye to be more noticing of slight changes in color, which is a good thing to practice. So blue violet using Prussian blue and Scarlet Lake is probably my favorite purple mixture. It kind of has like, it looks like I used black in it. It's perfect for bearded irises. So this transition of values was a little too, um, too much, too high in contrast. So I'm going back over it and adding a little bit more of that mixture. So it's more of a mid-tone value instead of my lightest value. Not such a big jump. Just lightly brushing off pigment in my water. So fun fact, um, uh, my least favorite color, least, is purple. But I actually do quite enjoy, I'm adding more blue to this because this is too much of a jump for my eyeballs. You don't have to do this, but I am. Um, I do actually enjoy though purple or violet, whatever, when it's mixed with opera rose instead of Scarlet Lake and Prussian blue. Prussian blue is like the magic color for purple mixtures in my opinion, because it makes it, because it's a cool blue, it's so vibrant in a purple. Um, as you can see, it really helps just like make your purple really, really vi vibrant, which I do love. Whereas if I were to use cobalt blue and Scarlet Lake especially, but cobalt blue and Scarlet Lake, I'll just do a little mix real quick. Not here. Cobalt. A little bonus content. A little bonus content. So if I were to do cobalt blue and Scarlet Lake, that was too much red. It's a very different purple. And let's do Prussian blue and opera rose is like so vibrant and fun. Love that. And the more pink we add, obviously the more purple it will be instead of bluish violet. So pretty. So with cobalt blue, it's just a little bit more smoky or muted. And with opera rose and Prussian blue, it's just the right punch that I like to use in my floral pieces. All right, so now we're gonna do blue and yellow. So I've got my Prussian blue. I'm gonna start with, let's find a cleanish spot, boom. And I have lemon yellow deep on both sides of my palette. I'm gonna go to my cool side because we are mixing cool colors. If I add red, like this orangey yellow to my blue, it's gonna make a muddy color because contrasting colors um, make brown. Orange and blue are contrasting colors. So blue green is just gonna be a subtle transition from Prussian blue to slightly green. Beautiful colors, beautiful greens, using Prussian blue as your base. This isn't very natural, uh, not rotating your paper, but for the sake of filming, I have to do it like this, but I would rotate my paper so that I'm pulling my color down 
in a straight line towards my body instead of on the side. Because I have to like completely rotate my upper body. Painting a color wheel is a great way to spend a couple hours or however long it takes you. Just going with the flow and looking at all the beautiful color relationships and how they, how they treat each other when they're sitting next to each other, when they're sitting further apart from each other, how contrasting colors interact I use a blue-green mixture all the time for my leaves. It's a great color for ocean, a mix of some oceans, ocean seascapes. <laughs> Stop. I'm really hungry. So now I'm going up to that blue-green mixture and just adding more yellow, lemon yellow deep, a little too much yellow for my secondary color green. So usually when I'm painting with green, like let's say I'm painting some leaves, I usually just use my sap green color in my palette by Winsor & Newton, love it, uh, and use that as my secondary color or my green color. And if I want it to be more yellow, then I add lemon yellow deep to it, or if I want it to be more blue, then we're adding more Prussian blue to it. The reason for this is lemon yellow deep is more of a granulating color, so it's easy for it to separate on if you're mixing it with other colors. Um, so you might, if you are using these two colors, you might start to notice that the yellow is pulling apart from or separating from the blue, and that is pretty normal for that color. Just, you know, keep moving your brush around before it dries to keep it mixing. But it doesn't really do that with sap green, which is nice if you are painting something like leaves and you want a yellow green. I still, I mean, you're gonna get a different green color using those two colors versus blue, uh, Prussian blue and yellow. So be mindful of that and maybe test out the mixture, see what you like better. My biggest recommendation for you guys who are wanting to learn more about color mixing, wanting to learn more about theory and relationships between colors, there's so much, there's so much information out there on the internet and there's a lot of contradiction contradicting opinions too. This is color theory, more traditional and then some more modern theories out there. So do your research, explore, try it out. But ultimately, I use this as my guide with the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, instead of the cyan method, because I like it. And it's how I was trained. I was trained in the more traditional way. So we have a lot more yellow in the, the Prussian blue and lemon yellow deep mixture now for our yellow green. This is a really beautiful like chartreuse color that I love to use in my floral pieces for more contrast in my greens. Again, if we were mixing with cobalt blue and yellow, it would be very different. That color mixing video will show you some fun and interesting and surprising color combos. You might think, you know, something like opera rose blue, cobalt blue and yellow would be disgusting, but it actually is a beautiful color. 
and I do that in that video. So there we have it, our tertiary color wheel. We've got 12 colors, three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, with our secondary colors that go in between those. Those are our equal parts combinations of our primary colors. And then on either side of our secondary color, we have our tertiary colors. So yellow, orange, red, orange, for example, the hyphenated names. Those are the colors that really help to bridge the gap between a triad color combination. So for example, red, blue, and yellow, triadic. Um, they form a triangle away from each other. So there's a lot of contrast. They're not completely contrasting colors, like for example, purple and yellow or orange and blue. Um, they're a little bit closer on the color wheel than direct contrasting colors, like for example, yellow and purple or orange and blue or green and red. Um, they're slightly closer, but if you don't want to have your piece be so uh, push and pull, so contrasting, then adding in your tertiary colors, the colors that go in between are gonna help subtly change or move your viewer's eyes subtly from one subject or one element in your piece to another. So your tertiary colors are really where it's at in terms of creating transitions for your eyes and subtly moving people through your piece. So make sure you explore the color wheel a whole lot more than that. Watch our color mixing video. That's gonna be super helpful for you to understand color relationships as well. Um, and contrasting colors should be used. They are also complementary colors, referred to as complementary colors, because when used properly, they provide a complement to one another. They pull people's eyes into a piece and make people wanna look for longer. But when they're used improperly, um, like they don't match vibrancy or they're just too, too intense. Both of them are both really intense. So they're intense in terms of value and in terms of hue, and they're going to create a lot of strain and just subconsciously, we don't know why, but we're looking away from it because it's too straining to look at. So complementary or contrasting colors are the ones that sit directly opposite of each other on the color wheel, green and red blue and orange, yellow and purple, for example, and when used properly are gonna pull people's eyes in, make the piece seem more vibrant, more interesting, but when they are used improperly are gonna create strain or disharmony. So you wanna create harmony with your colors, your color relationships. Think of them like a family unit on this color wheel. Peanut butter and jelly, they work together. In my opinion, they work together very nicely, but you know, sometimes salt, salty and savory or salty and sweet don't always work together. So you wanna think about that in terms of your colors and your color relationships when you are painting. So try this out, have it up in your office or up on your wall while you're painting. As always a reminder of thinking about color harmony and color relationships. There's so much more information in my book on color theory Everyday Watercolor um, has a ton of information in the introduction on color theory. We'll link it below. And also obviously a good Google search will just open up a whole rabbit hole of color theory research that you can go down. But my favorite color, I already mentioned this, but I think I'm sticking with it even with, after all the colors are down there. I know it's simple and boring, but my favorite color is still Prussian blue. I love that color so much, especially this darkest value. Um, I also love the blue green. Um, I think that just reminds me of the ocean and being at the ocean where I grew up and it's a beautiful like morning misty ocean color. So I also have a free, if you don't have the budget to buy my, my everyday watercolor book or something, I also have a free mini ebook, kind of a mini version of my book, Everyday Watercolor that does have a color, a really brief, but still something uh, section on color theory. So you can, we'll link that below and you can download that. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that was helpful for you. When I started really digging deep and researching color theory and color relationships and harmonies, that's when my paintings really started to transform and it became more natural for me for to know exactly what, how to mix up a color or how to get to a com combination that I wanted or where to place colors next to each other on an actual piece, whether it's floral, landscape, whatever abstract. So I hope that was helpful for you and keep practicing color theory. Make sure you watch that color mixing chart 
video tutorial that we have as well and turn on notifications, subscribe to our channel. I know I have already said this before, but it really does help us put together more bomb tutorials for you. And it also notifies you so that you don't ever miss a, an amazing tutorial from us ever again. Comment below on what your favorite color is in your color wheel. I would love to know. I don't know, it's informative. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.